<laughs> okay, this is the meeting of the District Operations Committee for uh, the 10th of March at 9.30. Gonna get a roll call, please. Oh, do we need to do this thing about Monty first? Um, Molly? We can do the roll call and then at the very okay. end, we'll make the request for his continued participation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Vice, Vice President Ron G. Kush. Here. Chair Matt Sampson. Here. Director. Oh, I'm sorry. Director, thank you. Well, I'm here as well. Okay, Director. thank you. Um, Director Jed Smith. Here. Vice Chair Monty Schmidt. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, sir. I see you though, but check your um, uh, audio. How, how can you do the roll call? I don't, I don't get this, Molly. If he's not, uh, we'll resolve that immediately. Oh, okay. Following roll call. Okay. And and Chair uh, Larry Russell. Well, roll obviously I'm just, here. Yeah. So we need to take care of that business now. It's a good okay. point. Um, but the roll call is just who's in attendance. Um, we need to confirm that um, President Schmidt. Um, we'll be able to attend um, remotely uh, pursuant to the new Brown Act rules under government code section 54953. Um, I believe he is making a request to do so under the emergency circumstances exception, which means that um, the request needs to come to the board for a vote. Um, that is allowed even though it's not on the agenda. There's a specific provision that allows a vote on that. Um, and President Schmidt, did you want to share information if you can. Yes. I, can you hear me? Sorry, my, my nothing seems to be going yeah. right this morning. Um, but uh, yes, I under the um, uh, the emergency provisions of the Brown Act, I would like to request uh, to be able to uh, participate remotely uh, under those provisions. And uh, for the reason that I'm still testing positive very slightly this morning, but in out of an abundance of caution uh, for my fellow colleagues and uh, board members uh, and staff opting to participate, uh, I'd like to participate remotely. So we'll we'll need to uh, entertain a motion and a second and a roll call vote on that. So moved. Second. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Kush. Director Sampson? Aye. Director Smith? Aye. Vice Chair Schmidt? Aye. And Chair Russell? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I need a motion for the adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any public comment on the agenda? There are none. Okay, roll call, please. Director Kush. Aye. Director Sampson. Aye. Director Smith. Aye. Vice Chair Schmidt. Aye. And Chair Russell. Aye. Public comment on items not on the agenda. There are none. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Roll call. Second. Director, Director Cush. Aye. Director Sampson. Aye. Director Smith. Aye. Vice Chair Schmidt. Aye. And Chair Russell. Aye. Okay. Item two: Amendment to Professional Services Agreement MA five nine six three with Woodard and Curran. Well, it's kind of worded funny, but it's about uh, the uh, tunnel. Yeah. Uh, good morning, directors. I'm Alex and I, Engineering Manager of the Design Section. I'll be presenting this item. So I have a PowerPoint today. How you doing, Alex? So far, so good. How are you doing, Director Russell? Good, good. Looking forward to your presentation. Yeah, let's just get this technology going. And how's it not showing? Maybe we can turn Pine Mountain into an amusement or something like that afterwards. Maybe put the gravity car in there. <laughs> just a quick question, just making sure I understand what, what are our goals here for the meeting? Are we looking to approve? This recommendation. No, here. it's a review and it's an for amendment to the contract. Right. Got it. Well, this is weird. It's showing the presenter view. It, it, it's okay, Alex. You, you can. We can deal with it. It's it's big go. enough. But no, I can't. 
Now you can't see anything. Right. <laughs> now I can see you. I can see myself. So that. Black. Dark. Hold on, it's. Yeah. It's the Wi Fi. Yeah. Okay, hold on. What? Well, why don't you go back where you were? That's better than what you got. Yeah, let me click yeah. no, no, hold on. I need to get to share. Okay. Hold on. I got you. All right. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Still black. Yeah, that. There we go. And then, and then we click over. Yeah, hold on. It's not, it's just yeah, taking it takes a while. while. And then, so the, click, that one right there. Right there. Oh. Yeah, right there. Better feed the squirrels in the squirrel cage. <laughs> they got to go a little faster. There you go. Cool. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now let me get this on. All right. So. So I'll be presenting this item this morning. So, uh, okay. So I'll be providing a, a overview, uh, including a little bit of the background and history of this project, uh, risk assessments that were done by the district with some evaluation criteria used to identify sites along with the sites that were evaluated and selected. And I'll briefly kind of cover the CEQA process that the district has done on this project and uh, what improvements we've done uh, in preparation for this project along with the phase one of construction uh, overview of the schedule and funding, and then I'll wrap it up with the actual amendment itself. So uh, Pine Mountain Tunnel is a 8,700 foot long tunnel that was constructed in 1919. And it was originally con uh, constructed to convey treated water from Alpine Lake to San Rafael and the Ross Valley area. In 1971, the tunnel was repurposed from a conveyance facility to a water storage facility. And district along with other regulatory agencies have conducted interior inspections of the tunnel in 1993 and in 2009. And on both occasions, the inspections identified uh, groundwater infiltration and staff have been working with the regulator, regulators to show uh, or how to best operate the tunnel while coming up with a plan to replace it. Uh, Pine Mountain Tunnel is one of those interesting legacy projects that, of infrastructure that we have whose use as a water storage facility is really suboptimum. So here are a few pictures of uh, the tunnel. See the, the one on the left shows infiltration into the tunnel. Uh, center one shows some calcium uh, deposits on the tunnel wall itself. And the far right one's actually a hole in the wall of the tunnel. And, and the district did a uh, risk assessment in 2019 as shown on this graphic. And uh, this is uh, what's known as a likelihood versus consequence of uh, graph that's used like, utilized by staff to help prioritize projects. Uh, and the x-axis, it actually ranks the likelihood of failure and it takes criteria such as age, leak, uh, leak, uh, leak history, and seismic vulnerability of the infrastructure into consideration. While on the y-axis, it provides a consequence score that is used to identify how the system would be impacted if that piece of infrastructure were to fail. So the infrastructure identified in the green or the lower left-hand section of the uh, graph have, have lower and lower, lower consequence and likelihood of failures, while the ones in the red or upper right have a higher likelihood and consequence of failure. As you can see, the Pine Mountain Tunnel was identified as being a high consequence, high likelihood of failure facility that is currently being addressed by the district uh, and prioritized for budgeting and replacement. Um, some of the issues- uh, Alex, excuse yes. me. How, how much storage is there in the tunnel? Three million gallons of storage. Three million gallons. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good size. Um, what is failure defined as here, Alex? It's uh, as far as water storage reliability to uh, maintain the water in the system and be able to provide it to the distribution system as needed. But in terms of failure of what? What, what does that mean? Oh, it's going to seismic. Seismic is, is seismic. The, okay. Seismic is the key component. So an, another way to look at that is that's 10, <clears throat> 10 acre feet for those of us who struggle between the the millions of gallons and the acre foot numbers. Thank, thank you, Monty. I was struggling. The, that's the structural mode. Wanted to know the one of the a number of water quality issues. Alex mentioned the groundwater infiltration. Of course, the groundwater isn't 
disinfected, so you need to maintain a residual to account for that. The other, the design of a horizontal tunnel for storage where we use the same um, kind of, right, a tunnel has two ends. We use the same end for both putting water in and taking water out, so you don't get good mixing of water. And it's a challenge to maintain the chlorine residual in the far end of the tunnel because that water gets stagnant. So then we release water from the back end. It's, it's really quite an effort to monitor this. Um, and really, you would never, ever design a horizontal tank <laughs> storage with this sort of detention time. But it was a legacy at the time. And the regulators have been, um, I, I think, supportive working with us so long that we had a plan to replace it. And that's kind of where we are. Mm -hmm. Maybe just Ben, following on that point, sort of a, a naive question: um, Why are we using the tunnel to store treated water versus raw water? Is yeah, it just has to do with the location, and it worked at the time where we didn't need it for transmission anymore. And it was like, okay, we need more storage. And we did, and we still do in the Ross Valley area. So it was put into service likely as a temporary storage. And then over the years and decades, you know, um, we, it just didn't get prioritized because it was working storage, but with um, these very much suboptimum water quality issues on top of the structural condition. And the treated water, it comes from the Bon Tempe treatment plant or San Geronimo? San Geronimo. San Geronimo. Correct. So it's actually pumped up to the. Yeah, up the Fairfax transmission line up to the. Yep. Yeah. And then from there, it's distributed amongst the system. Thank you. Hey, Alex, I think th this is a really important slide, and I think it highlights some of the discussions we've had in the past about looking at risk overall in the agency. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think that um, likelihood of failure is important, but it's not everything. So as an example, if I'm looking at Tokoloma pump station mm -hmm. and that single point of failure and the needs there, mm -hmm. my guess is a failure there would outweigh a problem at the administrative building but i'm not sure so i think there are probably other other factors that go into risk correct these and are just some of just the factors some of the factors yes. but like i don't know that i would um look to upgrade the administrative building over to tokoloma and so thinking about how we prioritize things here is, is uh i think could use a little more work yeah part of why the administration building is there i believe it was done prior to me coming on board here but the incorporated in that need that was identified is emergency <coughs> response in our current, we haven't had this discussion in detail with the board, we will be having it. Our current emergency response center has um, structural issues. So that needs, I mean, obviously in a seismic event, you want your response center to be standing and habitable. So that's, there's a number of issues that drove it I don't disagree with you as part of the upcoming um, capital planning effort that we talked about linked with the strategic plan. We're going to update this and really look at it robustly and look at our current needs. And yeah, situation. risk could be seismic. It could be financial. It could be, there's a whole bunch of factors, uh, uh, cyber risk. So Correct. I love that as a good focus for our future agendas. Thanks. Okay. So this next graph, it, it um, shows how the various components of our water storage system are typically broken out into. So as you can see here, the top 30% of our potable storage consists of operational storage, which is basically our day-to-day -day to use. So that's what we use all the time. Uh, the bulk of the storage, which is about 60%, is maintained uh, in the system for emergency uses such as firefighting needs, and it's not used as part of the daily cycling. And the last 10% of our water storage is considered dead storage, and it's not used, and it's to ensure that the system does not go completely empty. So in the Ross Valley storage need, um, those were calculated based on a 10-year daily consumption record that is updated every year to reflect the most current consumption trends. 
Uh, so the storage is calculated based on two times the average daily demand plus fire flow needs for the Ross Valley area. And that equates to about 11 million gallons of storage. Uh, the current Pine Mountain Tunnel, as I mentioned earlier, it only has a 3 million gallon storage capacity. And the new Pine Mountain Tunnel tanks will replace that will replace Pine Mountain Tunnel will have 4 million gallons of storage, which gives us an extra 1 million gallons of uh, capacity, which will allow the district to uh, put about 7 million gallons at the Ross Reservoir site so we can get to our 11 million gallon capacity. So, but, but uh, still short, right? Still not the 14 million that you were looking for. Correct. Well, right. Those were based on old, okay. old historical trends of consumption. Okay. And this is based on the new trend that we've been following in, re in okay. recent years. Yeah. So uh, the district and our consultant team developed the site evaluation criteria that was used to evaluate all the potential tank replacement sites. And the criteria allowed the district to evaluate all sites for operational flexibility, constructability, and envir environmental impacts. So some of the sites that were evaluated by the district and the team included previously looked at sites as well as new potential sites for feasibility for the new tank construction. So after the evaluation process, the district and the consultant team preferred location for the new storage site for the Pine Mountain Tunnel replacement was located and identified as Concrete Pipe Road near Culvert Number 5 on our watershed property. Uh, this site is located right off of Bolinas Road right before the Sky Oaks Ranger Station. And this image to the left kind of shows where Sky Oaks Ranger Station is with respect to the new tank site and the Fairfax Bolinas Road. And the image on the right is basically kind of a visualization of what the two tanks would look like along with this red line, which represents the new retaining wall. So in order to meet the district's storage needs, uh, and Sorry, how big is that retaining wall? It's like it, 30, 40 feet. It's, it's 70 huge. feet high and yeah. 400 feet long. And have we done, is, is an EIR needed for this project or? We've already done all the CEQA for this okay, process sorry. and it's already been reviewed and approved by the board and we're good to go. Thanks. Yeah. So in order for the district to discontinue the, uh, the tunnel, as I mentioned, we're gonna have to construct two 2 million gallon water storage tanks that will be pre-stressed concrete tanks and will include <clears throat> retaining wall, site drainage improvements, and they will be connecting to the existing 30 inch transmission line that runs parallel to Concrete Pipe Road along with installing valves and telemetry equipment, uh, fencing and new uh, maintenance lightings for that project. And then the materials and spoils for the project will be stored at our bullfrog quarry on our watershed uh, that's on site along with other locations throughout the uh, watershed for additional uh, materials. Uh, Alex, sorry, I'm asked, I, I, I spaced out on this. So with the 4 million gallons of supply that's coming with the, these tanks, mm -hmm. um, the shutting down of the tunnel removes 3 million gallons of storage. Once this is completed. Once this is completed, but then to achieve the goal of 10 million gallons, where, where is the remaining 6 million gallons? If it's uh, remaining approximately 7 million gallons will be looked at that, at the Ross Reservoir storage site. Okay. It's on our watershed right next to Phoenix Dam. The, the other one, the one that uh, Jed described as decrepit, that one with the roof, remember? It's a, it's a big concrete reservoir. It's it's a million gallons. And that correct. one's a million gallons, correct. So by going to seven there, that's where we get make up the deficit. Correct. So this is a secret process that the district uh, did for this project. So the staff published the initial study and uh, mitigated negative declaration uh, at the Marin County Clerk's Office, and it was also mailed to the public, and it was also posted on our website on September 17th of 21. Uh, for public review. And the period actually ran from September 21st to October 21st to be in compliance. And then after the review process, the staff presented the item back at the December 14th board in which where it was approved. Uh, and then on the 15th of December, the notice of determination was filed with the Marin County Clerk's Office, which finalized and completed our project as far as CEQA for this project. So, uh, Kind of in preparation to do all this work for the new tanks, the district did some improvements ahead of the project to ensure that the haul road and storm drainage culverts could handle the construction traffic uh, during the hauling of spoils to the tank site at Bullfrog. So uh, during the construction process, we'll be hauling and storing about 20,000 cubic yards of soil from the excavation site at Bullfrog Quarry. So that just to kind of give you an idea, that's about 2,000 dump trucks worth of material. So that's a lot of trucks going up Sky Oaks Road. 
So the picture on the left is uh, one of the retaining walls that we recently replaced on Sky Oaks Road. And that was to replace an old failing wood lagging retaining wall. And we wanted to make sure that the road would be structurally sound when all that construction traffic is going up and down the road. And the plant set on the right is an example of the culverts that we replaced on Bullfrog Quarry Road and Sky Oaks Road uh, ahead of the project, just to make sure that the culverts did have structural integrity to handle all that heavy load of, of the traffic. There we go. So, and this is the phase one of the project. So given the, the size and scope of the project, it's broken out into two phases. So this first phase, which is kind of just a rough sketch here of the rough grading, is uh, involves doing all the mass excavation, which is kind of identified and delineated by the screen line here. The installation of the 400 long, a 400 foot long retaining wall, 70 foot high, and along with these blue lines, which represents some of the, uh, the drainage improvements around the tank site. So this, this will be all in preparation for the phase two work. So um, the phase two work will be advertised in the second year of phase one um, of construction. And that, that way we could get that re you know, ready to go once the phase one work is done, then we could go right into phase two construction. Hey, Alex, can I just ask maybe what's probably a stupid question, which is this seems like um, making this site work is going to is literally going to re require a, an incredible amount of infrastructure of, of construction um, with that retaining wall is was was there no other location nearby that that would be suitable for for this load for for the tank siding I, I'm, I'm assuming the that you looked into it and the answer is yes but I just can't help but wonder given the amount of effort that it takes to make this suitable yeah, no, that's that's a great question, Director Schmidt. Uh, we did look at various sites, and uh, obviously, one of the, many of the considerations we're looking at is what additional infrastructure we would need. Mm -hmm. So, to, to make this work in another location would require additional pump station. There'd be a cost to that. Where this location is hydraulically at the same grade as Pine Mountain Tunnel, so there's no need for a pumping station. So, mm -hmm. as far as kind of the co the cost benefit of doing it uh, or constructing this project here. It's what made the most sense, and that's what we determined with the uh, the criteria team when we were looking at all the sites. Gotcha. Okay, the cost of a of a pump station and ongoing O and M compared to the the construction of the retaining wall. That's basically the right the and calculus. then also land considerations as far yeah. as acquisition and all that stuff. So all that played into into making the determination of the site. Great. Thank you, Alex. Alex, what happened to the surge tank? The, the which tank, pardon me? Surge. One of the things that Pine Mountain does is provide surge relief for changes in demand or valve closures and things like that. It, there was a surge tank in this design for a long time to relieve surge from the system. Yeah, there's going to be enough freeboard within the tanks themselves to handle that. Okay, surge. so they're going to handle it. Okay. Correct. Correct. Thanks. Okay. It's not going. There we go. Okay, so here's the project schedule. And the interesting thing, I mean, no project site was perfect, but the interesting thing with this one is that due to the Northern Spotted Owl, the construction window for this uh, project will be between August 1st and January 31st of each construction year. So the first phase of construction will be completed by January 31st of 2025. Uh, phase two final design will be completed during the phase one construction work and will be advertised and awarded in May of 24. Uh, this will start the construction submittal review process for phase two construction between June of 2024 through July of 25, and then following construction of uh, phase two in August of 2025 with a completion date of January 31st, 2028. So it's a long drawn out process over five years. So a portion of the project financing will be coming from WIFIA and WIFIA stands for the, the Water Infrastructure Financing and Innovations Act. And it's a federally uh, sponsored or federally run program by the EPA to sponsor water and wastewater projects. Uh, the loan itself has a maximum uh, loan eligibility of 49% of the project cost. And the rates are actually set by the treasury state and local government uh, and they're estimated to be right around 4% at this current time. In comparison, current bond financing interest rates are around 5%. Uh, 
So with the WIFIA loan money, that will help free up additional district funds that can be used to, for other capital projects. So Alex, you know, I've been hearing about this, the WIFIA programs, and mm -hmm. it's great to know that we're able to access that as well. But I'm just, I'm wondering if that loan, presumably by adding to our debt, um, influences our ability for future borrowing or bond issuance. Just, just want to check on yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, it would, it would add to our overall debt <clears throat> when we calculate debt service coverage. Um, which is kind of the governing factor in terms of how much one of them anyway. So we aren't asking today for support for WIFIA. This is more informational that we have lined it up. We're going to bring back the financial analysis with Brett at a later meeting and recommend or not proceeding with the WIFIA loan and what it would mean in context of our overall planning. Okay. So um, award of the first phase of construction was awarded in May 24th of 2022. So after award of the contract, uh, Woodard and Kern did provide additional services that were outside of that scope uh, that involved including engineering support during the phase one construction, which was for submittal reviews of the soil now wall drainage and grading. In, in addition, they assisted us in providing a seismic report that was used for our grant funding application that we submitted through Cal OES. Um, after we had additional discussions, it made sense to kind of keep them on board for this first phase of construction uh, to just to address any uh, submittals and questions the contractor may have during construction. And since this project is going over multiple years, there is a cost escalation factor that we needed to include. So all this being considered, the staff recommended action for this is to review and refer to the board to authorize the general manager to execute amendment number two with Witter and Kern in the amount of 154000 $578 for the new total contract cost of $1,232,913 for professional service agreement MA5963. And at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Alex. Any questions from the board? A Alex and, and, and I guess maybe Larry, in, in the February 14th operations meeting, we went through five larger unfunded projects. <clears throat> this wasn't one of them. The ones that we went through were North Marin Line, Smith Saddle, Ross Reservoir, San Geronimo, and AMI. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is that because this is was in the baseline uh, allocation? Okay, so this that, was this correct. was this was the core. We, we this was one where they're like we got to do this. This is this is the baseline. Okay, correct. Um, and uh, total cost estimate for this project about twenty four million dollars. So it's along the lines of those. And and in the budgets that we've discussed, this is in there already or is it, it clearly it is, identified or is it one of the two major ones that we discussed setting it, the money aside? No, it, it's in there um, over that four or five year period. So five million a year, four to five million a year. Um, we do have the opportunity with WIFIO, which will be a subsequent discussion of not doing the cash funding and freeing that up for additional work. But we'll, we'll bring back to the board what that would look like, what the additional work could be, and how it impacts our overall debt coverage. And so with uh, with this in there, how many other larger projects of the unfunded projects have we already discussed and, I guess, you know, uh, approved so far? So my current, my understanding, the current budget and cost of service analysis is including two of those large projects within that four year window. And this one. And this one, okay. yes. And we haven't yet um, zeroed in with the board, which of those two, but we'll be doing that as well. Just one follow-up oh. comment on the funding piece of this. This is the one that was denied funding through FEMA recently. Okay. Um, is there an opportunity to go back uh, per, I guess, that same pot at some yeah, point? Yeah, the, there is. Um, we just got notified the last few days that there's going to be another FEMA round. So we did have the, the option, and we do, of um, putting this on hold, going through FEMA for this project. It's such a priority, and we didn't get it the first time. The recommendation from staff is proceeding with the plans we have now and using that FEMA offering for a different project that may 
meet their criteria a little stronger and have a better chance. Um, ben, did we also submit this? I know that uh, Senator Feinstein and Padilla have been um, accepting um, uh, um, project requests um, for federal to for federal funding support, did we submit this project as well in, in for those um, lists? Um, we, my recollection is, we did pursue earmark funding with them as we had done last time and successfully. Um, I don't believe this project was the project we selected. I can't recall offhand. It, um, I, I can follow up with the board on that. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? You didn't mention our furry friends, the bats. I'm a little surprised about that, Alex, but as, as I see them, I, I don't really see groundwater as a, a contaminant. I mean, you know, it's surface water that people get concerned about, not, not the groundwater. But the bats, I think, are a real issue because they're small mammals and carry things like Giardia and that type of stuff. So the bats have free access here. There's a, a, a airspace above the water in the tunnel and the bats fly in and out through the doors. So um, we get rid of that problem too. Uh, any public comment? Um, yes, we have one um, public comment and that is Mr. Larry Minikis. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Larry Minikis. Wake up, Larry. There we go. Okay. You're muted again, Larry. There we go. Now you can hear me. Hi. Good morning, folks. I believe some of the earlier uh, evaluations uh, considered larger tanks above 2 million if I recall correctly, and, and if not, I stand corrected. Um, the question would be how, um, and I don't expect this to be answered here, how was it settled upon to have two million, two two million gallon tanks, and would it make sense to look at other options? Thank you. Oh, I can spend, I, oh yeah, yeah, uh, that, definitely, so, uh, so yeah, uh, Based on the sites that we looked at and evaluated at this current site, which is the best fit for this project, the size, basically these are 100 foot diameter tanks, 45 feet high, they are designed to seismic code. So anything that's a little bit taller could introduce other issues for the structural integrity of the tanks. Um, so that, that was a maximum size that was determined that could be fit, that could fit here to meet all our design or our storage needs, along with the um, the surge capacity, as Director Russell mentioned earlier today. Yeah, it's, it's just, a, just an interesting. Um, in, in the industry, it used to be felt more storage is always better. And now there's a growing realization that not necessarily, because if you don't, if you have too much storage, you don't get the turnover in your tanks mm -hmm. and you lose chlorine residual, and then you have to manually add it. So you really just want to size it right. And between the two sites, we're, we're able to size accordingly. And mm -hmm. I think we're in a pretty good place. Plus you get nitrification, Ben, as East Bay Mud well knows. That's when the ammonia gets oxidized to nitrates, which has its own set of issues right. from excessive storage time. It's a good question, Larry. Um, you know, it's it's kind of an optimal solution, as I recall from the previous discussions, as Ben just said. It's what we could fit in there. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a good good thought. Any other public comment? There are none. Okay. With that, we need to motion to refer this to the board. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, that's all we need. No vote on that one. Um, and with that, I think we're done.